see what some of the internal structures are. So again, this is the posterior side. This is going to be the anterior side. So when you're or, uh, orienting it, it's kind of easiest to use the vessels and the atriums. So this area here that's muscular and has the like arteries and veins and the fat, that all is the ventricle. Mm -hmm. This tan region at the top of the heart, those are the atriums. And you can see that we have a really good view of the atriums on the posterior portion of the heart and a very small view on the anterior side of the heart. However, on the anterior side of the heart, we have all of these vessels. Okay, so those vessels and the size of the atriums are good ways to help tell the front from the back. All right? Okay, so we'll talk about anatomy for using both sides of the heart, but since we're talking about the ventricles, we'll start here. This is going to be your approximate breaking point for the two ventricles. This is going to be the left ventricle over here, right ventricle over here. Okay, so again, we're looking at the heart since this is the anterior portion. Um, the left side, as we'll see when we pull off the which view do I want? Here we go. So if you were to pull off the top portion, you'd see it like this. Here again, the right ventricle and the left ventricle. The left ventricle is markedly larger, right? That's because this is the portion that's going to be pushing blood to the entire systemic system, so it under your toes, whereas this is just going to the neighbor, the lungs. Okay, so muscle-wise, you don't need as much oomph to get blood to the lungs. You need a lot to get it to your toes. So that's why you have a difference, and that's why the heart is angled more towards the left because this area is a lot thicker. All right, so now I'll talk about the atrium. If we're looking at the front of the heart, you can see the atriums here and here, but we're going to discuss them more on the posterior side because, as you'll see next, these actually have a different name. So if you look at the posterior side of the heart, this one on the left against its posterior it now matches us. This will be the left atrium. This will be the right atrium. Another easy way to keep this straight is the right atrium has these two big blue vessels going into it, and that's like venous deoxygenated blood. Here on the right ventricle, or excuse me, the right left atrium, I'm just get all confused here, left atrium, you can see that there are vessels also, but they're red, they're still veins, because you only have veins going into the atrium, since that's where blood collects into the heart, so this must be the left because it has deoxygenated, or it has oxygenated blood. And I'm just kind of alluding to something, but we'll get more into that in a second. Next are the apex. You'll be able to see the apex on both sides. It's just the very tip of the heart. Uh, next we have the ligamentum arteriosum. So let's kind of review our apex again down here. Up here within the vessels, you can see this little tiny piece of white. That's a ligament. It's the ligament arteriosum. It actually attaches the aortic arch, as we see here to the pulmonary trunk, which we'll talk about in a second. But that's right here. So this little tiny white piece, that's the ligament arteriosum. All right, so now with the aorta, when I was pointing out the aorta in the models, I was calling this whole thing the aortic arch. And that's really just out of convention because the models, as you'll see, kind of truncate this aorta at different points. But here we have this nice long portion. So we're going to break it into different structures, okay, for different parts. So we're going to use these vessels that come off the top as our border. So we're going to draw a line down just from this one, cutting this in half, or cutting this not in half, but in like about a third. The portion that comes up like this, so from here basically all the way to here, that's the ascending. Okay, so to ascend, that means to go up, that's the ascending aorta. Just the portion here where it's actually doing that 180 turn, so right underneath these three vessels, right there, this is going to be the aortic arch proper. You don't have to call it the aortic arch proper, just aortic arch, okay? And then after that last vessel, as we start going down, that's the descending aorta. So just remember that for the aorta, on the heart models only, if we put a sticker here versus here versus here, that matters. Okay, it gives a different name. So don't just call each of those the aorta or the aortic arch. Make sure that you're deciphering which is which. All right. Okay, next we have the brachiocephalic, common carotid, and subclavian arteries. Those are these three. Okay, so the best way to do this is just learn them in order. They're listed in order as they come off of the aorta on your sheet. So this first one here will be the brachiocephalic. That's going to be the rightmost, which makes sense. 
This middle one here with a C is the left common carotid. And the one on the left side will be the left subclavian. Now, when we're talking about vessels in the rest of the body and the rest of the body, you don't have to specify whether it's a left or a right. For these two, it's important to specify that they're the left ones, okay, as written in the manual. But this is really the only time you're going to be using left and right to describe vessels. Okay, next we have the pulmonary stuff. So if it has the word pulmonary in it, that should be a direct hint that you're probably going to see a switch in the deoxygenation and arteries and vein uh, indication. Okay, so the arteries will now be blue in the pulmonary system because they're carrying deoxygenated blood away from the heart, right, into the pulmonary system. Whereas the veins are going to carry oxygenated blood and will be red. So note that some of the vessels here make sense, like the aorta, it's red, it's carrying oxygenated blood, that makes sense. Some of them are backwards to what we're used to talking about, okay? And just remember if it's leaving the heart, that's an artery. If it's going to the heart, that's a vein. So here we have the pulmonary trunk. Um, I'm going to do pulmonary trunk before veins because it kind of makes more sense that way. So with our pulmonary trunk here, you can see that it's leaving the right ventricle. If it's leaving a ventricle, that means it's leaving the body. If you are familiar with the pathway of blood. So if it's leaving the, the heart through the pulmonary trunk, that must be an artery. It's getting pushed out of the heart. So here's a pulmonary trunk, which is an artery. And as the pulmonary trunk separates, it kind of looks like a T, so just this little base is the pulmonary trunk. That split is then going to be the arteries. So we have two arteries on this side, we'll have two arteries on the opposite side. All right, and that's because it's leaving the heart. Now let's look to the back view of the heart. Here's where we'll see our pulmonary veins. Veins will always, always, always be going to the atriums, okay? Atriums are responsible for collecting blood before it gets pumped out into the rest of the body. It's the holding tank, all right? So if it's the holding tank, that means blood's just getting to the heart through the atrium. And if it's going to the heart, blood's going to the heart, that means it's a vein, okay? So I'm always going to see atrium, think vein. So here at the left atrium, we have two pulmonary veins on either side for a total of four on our models. All right, next we have the inferior and superior vena cava. We know that these are veins already from discussing them earlier, but if we look to our right atrium, we can see that the inferior vena cava is here on the posterior side. And then if we look on top of the right atrium, we'll see that this right here will be our superior vena cava. So it's just the two vessels dumping into that atrium on the right side. All right, next we have the coronary arteries and sinus. Now the heart has to eat too, right? So it has to have its own blood supply. Here's kind of like a classic anatomy like trick question. The question would be, what's the first vessel to come off of the aorta? It's actually the coronary artery. So here we have that aorta, and you'd think that it would be brachiocephalic, right? That's the, the obvious answer. But if you have your heart with you, look at right where the aorta comes off of that left ventricle. Right here, kind of splitting the right atrium from the right ventricle, there's a little bit of red. 